All right, Chem 11 students. Uh, I just thought I'd make up a really quick, short video to show you how these solubility rules are used in chemistry. I kind of explained it a bit in the double displacement uh, YouTube uh, online lecture, but uh, I thought I'd go a little bit, you know, kind of slow it down, go to some detail here with you, do a bunch of examples, and then hopefully you'd be very comfortable going forward with them. So I have the solubility rules table here that is online for you, it's on your D2L page. You can download it and this exact same table will come up. And uh, so now we're gonna figure out, you know, how to use this thing. And what the solubility table actually does for us, it shows us the solubility rules, and what they do for us, is it tells us whether or not something will dissolve in water or not. So you can see the title here, to dissolve or not to dissolve. That's what this is gonna tell us, all right? So, we'll get rid of this. So, if something is going to dissolve in water, we say that that makes it soluble. So, it is soluble in water. So if I drop something into water and it's soluble, it will dissolve and form a solution. And we describe that solution with the word aqueous. Aqueous means that whatever that compound is, it is dissolved in water. So for example, if I have a solution of sodium chloride and I see little AQ after it, the state aqueous, that means that it's not the same crystallized solid that you would have in a salt shaker in your kitchen. It means that that salt has been put into water and it's now there as a solution. So it's a solution of salt dissolved in your water. All right? So if something is soluble, its state will be aqueous when we do chemical formulas and chemical equations. The opposite of that, well, what if something is insoluble? If something is insoluble, what does that mean? Well, it means it does not dissolve in water. So these two elements come together, they form a compound, and they will not dissolve in water. It will not, the ions won't separate and come apart from each other. It stays solid, it stays together. All right, so if we see something like calcium phosphate used in a formula, calcium phosphate is insoluble, so that means it's gonna be a solid. If it does not dissolve in water, it means you stay together. You're rock solid. Nothing is splitting you apart. All right? Water can't tear us down. So that's it. So if something is insoluble, its state will be solid. And we'll indicate that with little s. If something is soluble, it means it's aqueous, and we'll use the aq as we just saw. So let's go over a bunch of examples here. And we'll figure some of these out. So I've got my rules here. All right. Now the setup of the rules we can see here, I'll bring it to center. It has the rule and you'll see the first bunch of them say these, these four, uh, these compounds tend to be soluble. Nitrates tend to be soluble. Chlorates tend to be soluble. Acetates, halides, sulfates, more often than not when they form a compound, it's soluble. It will dissolve in water. There are exceptions to the rules as we start to see in chemistry more and more. Here's the rule, but this and this don't follow the rule, or that doesn't follow the rule, or that family of elements doesn't follow the rule. So the rule is that nitrates are soluble. And in this case, there's no exceptions. But we see down here, sulfates are soluble. So sulfate with a bunch of stuff, different things, is gonna be able to dissolve in water. But if I have sulfate, with one of these five elements here, calcium, barium, lead, mercury, or silver, all of a sudden, it's not soluble anymore. It becomes insoluble. 
it becomes the opposite. That's the exception. The bottom six rules are things that for the most part are insoluble. They won't break down in water. They're solid as a rock. Except there are exceptions here as well. So for example, if I use, for instance, phosphates, we had calcium phosphate earlier. Phosphates are insoluble. Oh, that means it'll be a solid. Except with ammonium or group one. Well, calcium is group two, so it's not an exception, so the rule stayed, and we said it was insoluble, it was a solid. So let's go over a bunch of examples here now of this, and uh, we'll see. Sometimes the rules are followed, sometimes we break the rules. They're accepted. So, if we look at something nice and easy, we'll go with calcium nitrate. So there's my formula for calcium nitrate. Now, the rules are all based on the second part of the compound. So in this case, nitrates, I look for nitrates. It's right here at the top and it says, nitrates are soluble. There's no exceptions. So if I have nitrate, this is nice and easy. It's soluble, which means it's, it's AQ, right? Here's another example. We'll do a sulfate. Lithium sulfate. So here's sulfates. I use the second half of it. Now I have to be careful because this is sulfates and sulfides over here. So this is sulfate. It's my polyatomic. It says that it is soluble. So this is soluble. Now I have to check lithium. Is lithium one of the things that breaks that rule? And it is not. So the rule stays. It stays soluble and it's aqueous. Now if I had lead to sulfate. Again, I can see that it's a sulfate, just like the previous one. I know sulfates are soluble, and you're thinking, okay, this will be AQ. But I have to check these exceptions, and there's lead two. Lead two is an exception to the rule, which means it's no longer soluble, it's going to be insoluble, which means that sulfate with the lead will be a solid. All right, do a few more examples here. Chlorates, right? Chlorate was nice and easy one. It's like, so if we have calcium chlorate, its formula is that. I look at chlorates. Again, I use the second half. It's chlorate. It's right here. They're soluble. There are no exceptions, which means soluble means it will break down. It's aqueous. Try another one. Let's go with this one. Silver 1 bromide. Now, bromide, bromine, is a halogen. It's group 17 in the periodic table. So, if I take a periodic table up here, all of these are your halides. They're the halogens on the periodic table. So, there's bromine, fluorine, chlorine, and iodine. They're all here. So, that's what this belongs to. So, I look here, there's halides, and it says halides are soluble, except with silver. So, it's not aqueous anymore. The silver breaks that rule and this will be solid. All right. Another example. Again, I'll use the same ending, NaBr. So here's bromine. It's a halide. I go to my rules. They're soluble. Will sodium break that rule? No. Sodium is not listed as one of the elements that will break the rule, so it will be soluble. It'll break down in water and we put it down as aqueous, all right? Do a few more examples. So those are some of the examples where the primary rule was that it was soluble. Now we'll do a few down here where it says it's insoluble, all right? So we'll go with, uh, we'll do a carbonate, all right? So if we had, might have magnesium carbonate. Again, we use the second half. This is a carbonate. I look here, here's carbonates. They are insoluble. That means that it's a solid. 
but I got to check, does magnesium break the rule? Magnesium is not ammonium, and it's not a group one element, right? When we say a group one element, we're talking about these elements right here. Here's group one elements. That first column is group one. Magnesium's right here in group two. So it is not a group one element. So it does not break the rule. So the rule stays. It's insoluble, which means this will be a solid. All right. If I take that same compound and I put it with potassium, carbonates are insoluble. So you're thinking, oh, it's going to be a solid just like this one. Let's see if potassium breaks the rule. Well, potassium is definitely not ammonium, but it is a group one element, right? If I go to my periodic table again, I can see that potassium is right here. It's in that first column on the periodic table. So it changes the rule. It accepts the rule, right? Not accepts, but it, it goes against the rule. So insoluble now becomes soluble. And so it's aqueous. Same ending, but again, we have to check to see if the rules are followed or not. This one follows the rule and it's insoluble, forming a solid. This one breaks the rule. So the solid becomes aqueous. All right, do a few more examples. It's, it's a pretty easy table. Once you get used to working with it, it's not that hard at all. Um, phosphates. So we'll go with a couple of phosphates here. We'll do sodium phosphate and we'll do aluminum phosphate. All right, so two different phosphate things here. The phosphate rule is they are insoluble. So you're thinking, okay, these are gonna be solid. Well, let's see. Ammonium breaks that rule. This is not ammonium. And group one ions will break that rule. Sodium is in group one. So my solid just became aqueous because this breaks the rule that it is insoluble or solid. Aluminum. So phosphates are insoluble, that means it'll be a solid. Aluminum is not here and it's not group one. So the rule stays. We don't break the rule, we keep it. So this one will be a solid. All right, do another couple of examples. Hydroxides, we'll do a couple of hydroxides. So we'll do barium hydroxide and we'll do let's see aluminum hydroxide all right so barium hydroxide hydroxides at the bottom of my table here they are insoluble so you would think okay they're they're going to be solid but barium breaks that rule. So no longer is it solid, it becomes aqueous. Same thing, hydroxides, I look here, insoluble, should be a solid. Aluminum is not listed here, and it's not a group one element. So it follows the rule and it's gonna stay insoluble. All right, I'll do one last one with you. Chromates, so we'll do a couple of chromates. Chromate is a polyatomic that we'll see occasionally in our work, um, but chromate is this thing right here. This is chromate. It's a polyatomic. It wasn't on our chart, and you won't have to know it, but I put it on here because it will show up on some of the worksheets. So you're not responsible to memorize this. It's, it has a charge of two minus. And so ammonium chromate here. So we look chromates, zero, four to two minus. They're insoluble, which means this should be a solid, except ammonium breaks that rule. So it won't be a solid, it will be aqueous. Ammonium breaks the rule of it being insoluble. And same thing if I put that chromate with Strontium chromate, I look at chromates, they are insoluble, 
Ammonium, well, that's not ammonium. Group one will break through. That's not group one. So it stays solid. All right. So this handout is put, uh, I put it onto the uh, D2L page for you. Bunch of examples, pretty easy. Once you, I think once you start to use it a little bit, you'll just, you'll start flying through it. And you actually start to internalize or remember the solubility rules. But that's a pretty little easy, uh, I think, tutorial to go over how we're gonna use that sheet going forward. And all of our equations from here on in, we will be doing the states, and this is gonna help us tremendously. All right, anyway, hope that made it crystal clear for you. Uh, if there's any uh, comments or questions, concerns, uh, you can make a comment on the YouTube video in the, in the comment section, or reach me through the Edsby page for our class. Anyway, I will uh, talk to you later. Hope you enjoyed the lecture. Bye-bye.